It's about six in the morning. Already a false dawn breaks over the great city as it stirs into activity. Already groups of early workers start to crowd the subways. Already news trucks with the early morning city editions speed through the city. Right now, as the news truck speeds up to the intersection, drops off a bundle of newspapers in front of the newsstand. Hey, why don't you look where you're going? Narrowly missing Kitty DiCarlo, who, after crossing the street, stops in front of the darkened cocktail bar. Doesn't look to me like anybody's in there. Fine. Someone can't even get a break before she goes to sleep. Can I help you, lady? Oh, I know this. Can I help you? I need a drink, officer, but it looks like nobody in this town except you ever goes to work. Well, bars aren't allowed to open before eight, lady. Huh? Close at four, open at eight. Well, you don't know a place I can get a drink before eight. Sorry, but I don't, lady. Now, listen, why don't you go to that restaurant across the street? Get yourself a glass of hot milk. Yeah. Or some coffee. I need a drink. Well, then you'd better buy yourself a morning newspaper, lady. Huh? And sit down somewhere and read it. Bars don't open until 8 o'clock, which means you've got almost two hours to wait. Kitty DiCarlo doesn't bother about a morning paper. She just looks at the officer, then walks slowly and unhappily down the street in the direction of her hotel. Meanwhile, some miles away, at the district attorney's home. Ah, oh, Mr. Mason, the street. Come in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. And thank you for seeing us at this time of the morning. Well, not much chance of my going back to sleep after Craig brought me your client and the blank woman. I'm, uh, afraid there's going to be a nasty case, Mason. Oh? Uh, but then, of course, you don't know what we know, and... <laughs> I, have for one, certainly don't intend to tell you. May I say something, Mr. District Attorney? Yes, Miss Pete. We have every reason to believe that no kind of innocent. Oh, I'm sure. Well, it's out of my hands now. Is it? Or if you'd like to talk to the assistant in charge. Yes, I'd like that. Well, he's back in my library. Uh, first, though, uh, nothing has been released to the press. We have enough reporters on our neck all the time, Mr. Mason. We don't go around waking them up. Why? Well, as you know, I have just returned the child in question to Mr. Grant. Yes? Uh, Mr. Grant doesn't know yet that Dory is not his own. I want the chance to tell him. Well, we've scheduled a press conference for 11. Nothing will get out about the parentage of the child before then. Well, thank you very much, Mr. D.A. I can imagine what a shock it would be. There won't be any leaks from here. Now I wonder what happened to Aft. Who? Uh, Aft, Frederick Aft. Ah, isn't he the one who... My boy, yes, yes. He's the one who handled the rich and jewelry robbery thing. Yes, I... Oh, here he comes. Yes, he was back having coffee. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Come over here. I want you to meet May Grant's lawyer, Perry Mason, and uh, Mr. Mason's secretary, Miss Street. Oh, how do you do? How do you do, Mr. Rapp? Rapp? I'm sorry we had to meet under such conditions, Mr. Mason. But so am I. Well... I'll leave you all. Thank you again, Mr. District Attorney. Uh, watch him, Matt. We'll steal your eyes, <laughs> uh, Goodbye, Miss Street. Goodbye, sir. Now, to get to the point, Mr. Rapp, we we'll believe Mrs. Grant innocent. Yes. And since we may only be able to hold her on an open charge, you'll come to warn me that unless she's released or worked on a specific charge, you'll fire her out of jail with the weight of her discovered. I uh, didn't come here to warn or to threaten the right to her discovered. The loophole through which the criminal seeks to obey the majesty of the law. What was that? Uh, that was Mr. Apt's way of putting it, Bella. I would say it keeps the state from arresting a citizen, throwing him in jail, and holding him in justice. Would you say that, Mr. Mason? Well, I suppose you would. Now, but please understand me. Even though I'm hampered by these rules, I'm not criticizing the machinery of justice. No? No, Miss Tree. Because even though criminals, when they're lawyers, twist and dodge behind the law's technicalities, an able prosecutor can trip them up. Uh, shall we talk legal philosophy at another time? Indeed we will, Mr. Mason. Oh, because I believe you and I represent two opposing views of the law. The righteous moral view and the sentimental merciful view. In other words, you're a watchdog for the law. Yes. Well, personally, I would rather be a watchdog guarding innocent persons from a mistake. The law doesn't make mistakes, Mr. Mason. Just as you made no mistake and saved yourself trouble by coming to me for it. You couldn't get a writ of habeas corpus from May Grant. He's charged with murder in the first degree. What? Terrific. Murder in the first degree. 
for which no bail is given. In other words, you believed Kitty DiCarlo's fantastic tale. Uh, Mrs. Blank, or as you choose to call her, Kitty DiCarlo, is a poor sinned against woman. Oh, right. You uh, sound sure of yourself, Mr. Rapp. I have proof, Mr. Mason. Good and sufficient proof. Proof which is so convincing to me that I intend to lay it before the grand jury as soon as it can be arranged. Yep, I have... All right, I can't stop you. However, let me ask you this. Go easy on the publicity. My grand is not the only one who will be hurt. As the child... Mr. Morrison, well, let's understand this from the start. I don't intend to go easy on anything. It's my duty to see what you triumph. Ego is punished. I shall do everything in my power to bring this about. And so you'll know just where I stand. I wish there were a punishment more devastating than electrocution. So I could ask it for your client. And I'll tell you why. Because May Grant's crime is more terrible than murder. She not only took a life, she tried to steal a life. She tried to steal Captain DeCarlo's child. She profaned the sacredness of motherhood. Now the machinery of justice is turning. I shall say not that it is halted, but that it moves as quickly as possible against Mrs. Grant. And get you as much publicity as quickly as possible? I shan't even answer that. Unless you'd like to think of this as an answer. I believe in right. I believe in right triumphant. I believe evil is always punished. I shall see to it that evil, in the form of May Grant, is punished. And Mr. Mason, now I warn you, if you stand on the side of evil, you will be smashed. Not because I by myself am powerful, but because I, with right on my side, form an irresistible combination. I hope it works, Mr. Rapp. Justice always works, Mr. Mason. And since I represent justice, I... Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. Now, before I thank you for this interview, the uh, D.O. said no press releases would be made before 11 o'clock. The district attorney is a man of his word. Is what he said binding on you? Uh, yes. And that's all I wanted to know. All right, Della, that gives us plenty of time to see May Grant before we go explain things to Let's go. A few moments later, in the lobby of Kitty DiCarlo's hotel... I'm waiting for 8 o'clock so I can get a drink. Anna, I... I Are you going from a pay station? Yeah, Anna, I need a drink. I, what I, happened when you talked to the district attorney? Well, you ought to see my hands. They're shaking like a leaf. Will they stop shaking? If I played you the record of you confessing to the murder of Marcel? Oh, please, please, please. Well, then what happened? Well, I, I talked to a guy named Frederick Act. Impress him? My witness did. I did just what you told me to do, Anna. And? Well, it hit this guy up just right. He's a crusader, believes in motherhood and that kind of stuff. He can maybe take Terry Nelson, Anna. With our help, he will. Now, you go on up to your room, Kitty. Stay there until you get a message about a dress. Then go downstairs to a pay phone booth and phone me. But Anna, I've got to have a drink. have them send up a drink at 8 o'clock. Now, go to your room while I phone Bill Grant. What? I'm going to phone Mrs. Grant's husband. Anna's got something she wants to say to him. is hidden the Frederick App. Well, after talking to Frederick App, Perry Mason knows he's in a fight. But Perry doesn't know, can't know, about Anna B. Hurley, his hidden opponent. And as for what Anna plans to do, why, she wants to talk to Bill Grant and, well, be sure to join us on Monday. It's 6.45 in the morning, about 15 minutes after the close of our last episode, as Perry and Bella enter a small restaurant just across from the city women's prison. Get yourself a cup of coffee or something while I use the telephone, Bella. Okay, Chief. I'm going to look through this early morning edition, too. There won't be anything in it. If there is? If there is, we'll shoot out to Bill Grant's fast without seeing me. 
However, I don't believe that would release that news. Whatever else Frederick Apps may be, I'm sure he's a man of his word. Well, do you mind if I check this newspaper while you telephone, Count? Oh, uh, not a bit. I want you to. Thanks. You want me to get a cup of coffee for you two, Perry? No, thank you. Sure. Hello, Paul. Did I wake you? Well, uh, fine. I'm glad to learn you're so alert. If you're so wide awake, we can get right down to business. I'm across from the women's prison. That's right. I'm going in to see May Grant. I've just come from the district attorney's home. Met the assistant who's going to be in charge. Frederick Apt. <laughs> yes, you can whistle that again. He's going to charge May with first degree murder. He's going to release all the news, including the fact that May is not Dory's real mother. Yes, I know, but he's that kind of a guy. Bay is with Bill. Fast asleep, I hope. No, I haven't told Bill she isn't his yet. I need to see May first. Well, the DA personally gave his word there would be no leak. Why should they want to annihilate Bill Grant? Now, I'll get out to Bill as fast as I can. Meanwhile, I have some work for you. Put a 24-hour watch on Kitty DiCarlo. Well, here's why I'm talking like this. Frederick Apt may be an opinionated fanatic. But he's nobody's fool. He wouldn't rush in before the grand jury unless he were pretty sure. Okay, Paul, get on it. Right, I'll get in touch with you after I've seen May and told Bill the truth about Dory. And some moments later, in a conference room of the women's city prison... Oh, Mary. It's all right, Mary. Oh, it's... It's all right, dear. Oh, sorry. Just fine. Uh-huh. Fine. Bill, so wonderful. Mr. Bill Carlton's told him Dory isn't his daughter, Miss Nancy. Well, I haven't had a chance yet, May. Just and he's waiting for us now. We're going out to tell him as soon as we leave here. I know, but... We didn't have any choice, May. We took Dory home and then we went straight to the district attorney's house. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, so are we. I wanted you to tell Dory she isn't here. No, I'm going to. I didn't want anyone else. No one else will, May. I, I should have told him a long time ago. I would back now if I could, but he was here. And don't you worry about Bill. The first time he hears that Dory is not his daughter, he'll hear it from us. And we're not going to hide anything from him, May. In fact, we're not going to hide anything again. I said he wouldn't be here. 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 If I hadn't written now that water under the bridge. This is so terrible pretending Dory was mine when she I haven't taken that baby. What do you think would have happened to us? You think Kitty DeCarlo would have mothered her? I'll answer that. Sorry, be dead of neglect by now. Kitty DeCarlo hates the children. The only reason she wants Dory is because... That Dory's inheritance. We know, man, we know. Yes, of course she could. So let's not rehash all that's happened. We didn't expect to stay this long, May. We only came by on our way to see Bill. Yes. May, you could have some information that could help us. Oh? I think there's someone behind Kitty DiCarlo. I don't understand. They're pulling the strings, telling her what to do. Oh? Kitty was very certain of her actions all of a sudden, as if she'd been rehearsed. Yes. Now, such a person, I mean, whoever is behind Kitty, would need to be a powerful personality. One whom Kitty knows and either respects or fears. And somebody Kitty has known over a period of time. I haven't known Kitty. Well, what I'm getting at is this. This someone may reach all the way back in time to the period when you brought Dory. Oh. I didn't expect you to remember her offhand, but back your brain, will you, May? I will. Unless I misjudge Frederick Apt, which I don't think I do, we'll need everything we can get. I'll do my best to remember his connection. Look at my love to them. Yes. And kiss Dory. Yes. Now tell him. Tell him 
that I love him. And that I wanted to tell him about God and all of I will. Ask him if he can find it in his heart to support the Emperor of I love him very much, Mr. May. Of course you do, May. And don't worry, darling. You may still understand. Not that I think that'll be so hard. You should have seen his face when Dory ran up to him. I wish I had. He loves her with all his heart, May, just as you do. Of course, it's going to be a shock in that she isn't his, but Mabel loves her enough to get over that kind of shock. I hope so. I tell you, if he doesn't understand... Now, no thoughts of uptime, May. One minute. We'll make everything come out all right. You better ring to the matron, Della. Okay, Chief. I think we'll go now, May. We'll try to remember. Hmm? I will. Give my love to those two. Tell them to my whole heart. It's 15 minutes later now, and Perry and Bella are out of the women's prison and in their car and on their way to Bill Grant's. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the sun porch of the Grant home... 11, 12, 14... Hey, how about 13, Doris? <laughs> Come on, Miss. <laughs> I'll get the ball for you. You know, uh, 13 comes before 14. Does it? You know an awful lot, don't you, Daddy? Well, I... I know I love you. And I know that you should have stayed in bed and slept. Should I want to be with you? Mommy said for me to be with you. All right, then, darling, you shall be with me. Hey, do you want me to count while you bounce your ball? Have you time before breakfast? Oh, well, sure, of course. You start bouncing. Oh, now who's that? Be right back, Billy. All right. Yeah? Uh, Mr. Grant? Mr. William Grant? Yes. I'm a reporter, Mr. Grant, a representative of the press. Yes, I know what a reporter is, and I'm not giving out interviews. Oh, but this is such a marvelous human interest story. I, I can do your side so much good if you cooperate. My side? Well, your wife's side. You love your wife, I assume, and the little girl? Of course I love my wife and my little girl, but... Your little girl? Oh, oh you mean there are two children? Well, of course not. Dory's our only... Oh, Dory? Oh, you mean no one has told you about Dory? What? You mean your wife hasn't told you about the child you call yours? Now, look here, is it? Well, it'll be in all the newspapers this afternoon, Mr. Grant. The district attorney is going to release the story this morning. Look, if you're trying to tell me that my... But now, oh, Mrs. Grant isn't Dory's parent either. What? Well, Mrs. Grant says she got Dory when she was an itsy-bitsy baby. Huh. Oh, you, you're mad. Oh, that's what Mrs. Grant says. Uh, a woman named Kitty DiCarlo says Dory's hers and that your wife stole her. From a nursing home in Minnesota. But just think, for all these years you haven't known. For all these years you thought Dory was yours. Flesh of your flesh. And now, like a bolt from the blue, you learn she's not. Oh, what a story. Uh, Mr. Grant... Would you mind giving me your first reaction? Would you mind telling me how you feel, Mr. Grant? Of course, Perry Mason had no way of knowing that Anna B. Hurley would pose as a reporter... And Perry has no way of knowing that Anna B. Hurley has already broken the news to Bill. But as Perry will find out, Anna's malicious maneuvering will have a profound effect on his plans. But more of that tomorrow. How would you feel if you'd just been told that the child you'd loved and cared for and brought up as your own wasn't yours at all? What would you do? As you know, just a few moments ago, Anna B. Hurley, posing as a newspaper reporter, telephoned Bill Grant, let drop the information Dory is not his daughter. Of course, Anna's purpose is to drive a wedge between May Grant and her husband, turn Bill against his wife, and possibly, just 
possibly upset any defense Perry Mason may have planned for Mrs. Grant. Right now, it's immediately after the close of our last episode. And Bill Grant stands beside the telephone in his living room, staring at it. And then... I thought may love me. The man can't count on his wife's love and help. What, what can he count on? A woman can't love a man when she... Oh, oh now wait a minute. Oh, oh, that could have been a lie. It's because someone telephones and says, Barry isn't our child. That doesn't prove it. She... But... How am I going to find out? Just for a little while. Well, I don't feel like something to go with anything, Mr. Well, you built it anyway. 
Can we get him? Sorry, I need him there. Yes, we will. It appears somebody jumped the gun. Yes. And I thought your Mr. Frederick Apt was such an honorable man. Yeah, I thought so, too. Both he and the district attorney promised to keep this story quiet until 11 o'clock. Here, it's not eight yet. I don't understand it. It doesn't help that poor child. Which doesn't help anyone. Well, let's find out. The front door isn't closed. Nobody in the living room. Oh, the front porch doors are open, Harry. Oh, there's Bill. Bill? Hmm? Oh, Mr. Mason. Miss Street. Well, you just left the women's prison. Just spoke to me. I arranged for you to see her. Thanks. We also spoke to Dory outside the house. Oh, interesting. She's very upset. Is she? Yes, I am. Oh, she is. Oh, no matter what, that child never heard Just anything. Just a moment. I want to speak to Mr. Mason. All right. Mr. Mason, I want a straight answer. A straight answer to a straight question. I don't want to be put off. I don't believe I ever put you off, Bill. As you know, I came out here early this morning to explain in May's name. But circumstances under which none of us had any control prevented me. Who told you? That's got nothing to do with it. You're wrong there. Who told you? A reporter which doesn't make any difference, as I said. All that matters is, is it true? Is, is that child outside my... My daughter or isn't she? Well? Why do you ask that, Bill? If you love her as your daughter, she is your daughter. I don't want any double talk. I want facts. If you'd stop to think, you'd know that you need all the facts. All right, let's put it this way. Story flesh of my flesh. Bill. I love her. That's all I need to know. She isn't. She's nothing. Child, I'd love to find the pardon. Sorry, it's strange. I've, I've been hoodwinked in my own home. Yeah. Hoodwinked? Oh, there's an ugly word for what's happened to me. Well, you're being a fool. What else would I be after the way I cared for that child, after the dreams I had for my daughter? Daughter. And her mother, her mother, who hoodwinked me into believing... I, I thought the sun rose and set on them. Broke my back for them. I enjoyed it. Counted on them. Both of them. No. I'll never look at that child again. Take her away to her real mother, Mr. Mason and Mr. May. Did you call me, Daddy? Oh, honey, I think you'd better stay outside. Are you feeling better? Daddy, I think if you came outside and carried someone, you'd feel better. Can't be. Get out of here. Get out of my sight. Daddy. Shut up. What's the matter with my dad? You and I are coming outside, darling. Now, Daddy's sick. You mustn't mind what he says when you sit here. everything he holds near and dear is alive. What can a man count on when his life is blown up in his face? Oh, Mr. Mason, you're a lawyer. You're supposed to be smart. Tell me what? 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 It seems that Anna B. Haley's plan is paying off. It seems that nothing can heal the wound in Bill's heart to make possible the solid front Perry Mason feels is so important for May's defense. But more of this tomorrow, so be sure to join us, won't you? after the close of our last episode. And at this moment, May Grant's husband is sitting slumped in a chair, hands covering his face. Bill Grant has just received the most shattering blow of his life. Bill Grant has just been brought face to face with the fact that his daughter, the child believed to be his daughter, isn't his at all. Now he removes his hands from his face, says... I'm sorry, Mr. Mason. Don't apologize to me. Man shouldn't give way to his feelings. A man shouldn't have your kind of feelings. 
And if he did, he shouldn't ask forgiveness. And you want to be forgiven, Bill, it's because you're sorry. Now, if you had said, forgive me for acting the way I did to that child, Tony, that's Dory. She hasn't done anything to you. She's the same sweet little girl she was five minutes ago. It's not her fault your wife wasn't her mother. And it's not her fault May Grant took her when she was a baby and taught her that you were her father. The child didn't practice any deceit. But you're going to apologize to anyone, Bill. Apologize to her. Now, look, Bill. I know you had to take it on the chin. I know it was a lot worse because that reporter told you that Dory wasn't your child. But, but, what, 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 what is it to say? I thought I was a father. My wife led me to believe I was a father. She gave me a baby to love as my own, but, it, but it's all a thought. The daughter I thought was mine isn't mine. The child I loved is mine is, is an imposter, a cheat. Dory? It's for the wife I love. It's for me. Well, you're, you're right about her. I didn't say anything about your wife. Dory didn't know what she was doing. She couldn't know what she was doing. Quite right, Mr. Mason. How could a few months old baby practice to see? But May wasn't a few months old. She deliberately cheated me. Deliberately lived a lie with me. Now what do you want me to do? Ask May to forgive me for harboring such thoughts? Well, Mr. Mason, you haven't answered me. I don't see there's anything for me to say. Because you know as well as I do that May would lay down her life for you at any time. And as for Dory, I... Yes, Stella. I took Dory next door to a neighbor, Terry. Oh, good. Poor baby. For your information, Mr. Grant, I told Dory that you were so sick you didn't know what you were saying or what you were doing. I don't see why you treat me as if I were a criminal. Well, if you don't see the reason, it's perfectly all right with me. Well, I didn't arrange for that child to be brought into my house. No, but your wife did. To take the place of a baby that died to save you heartbreak. And at any rate, that's something between you and me, and by no stretch of the imagination can it be construed as Dory's fault. Well, I suppose I was a little hard on Dory. Oh, a little hard. All right, I was very hard on I her. think that would be more accurate. You should have my clothes his strength. You expect me to find out what I just found out and take it calmly? Have you any idea how much I love that little girl? That... And me? Uh, uh, I'm not a very clever man. The last thing that I live by. I work for my family. My, my family was everything to me. I was proud of my family. Oh, I can think of the times that Dory would smile at me and I'd say, Look, my look, Dory's got your smile. Dory looks just like you and she's fine. Well, I, I wondered why May was unhappy at times. Now I know. Dear. If May suffered... If she suffered, I say good. Because I suffered more in the last two minutes than... No, oh, the thing's talking doesn't help. Look, Miss Street. Yes? I don't see any reason for hurting either Dari or myself any further. So I, I'm going to ask a favor of you. What's that? I, our neighbor, Business is Cody, who took Dari to her. Yes? She knows where Dari's things are. I'd appreciate it if you'd ask her to come and pack them... But come and pack them right away. And if, if you return Dari where she belongs to her real mother. Why, you don't mean that. You couldn't. No. I, he means it all right, Della. You yes. bet I do. Well, at least he thinks he does. Now, look, please don't try right it. now. He's trying to get even. Trying to hit back. Like a child who's been frightened and hurt hits back. The child doesn't care whom he hurts. Just so long as he hurts someone. Hear somebody cry out. That's all that matters to him. Since he's hurt, he wants to make sure that someone else is hurt. And that's the way Bill is with Dory. You quite through analyzing me, Mr. Mason? Because if you are, I'd appreciate it if you'd let Miss Creek go to the Cody's and deliver my message. Or would you rather I went myself? Why don't you go, Bill? Why don't you do the whole savage thing? Why don't you get good and even? Break Dory's heart. After all, she's not yours. She's Kitty the Carlos' child. But even so, what's the difference? Who can hurt a five-year-old child? A five-year-old girl. Suppose she is hurt. She'll forget it. 
Why, I'll bet she's forgotten what you said to her a little while ago. I'll bet she's even forgotten how you drove her out of this house. Told her you didn't want to see her. Shall we find out how she's forgotten, Bill? You uh, told her to play in front. Maybe we can hear her laughing. Well, I can hear her outside, Bill. She's playing with a ball just as you told her to play. Half of it. Listen. You're not angry at Dory, though. You aren't even angry at me. You're angry because life has stepped up and belted you once. Well, most of us take it. Instead of trying to pass it on to those we love. And those who love us. May is in trouble, Bill. We haven't had a chance to talk about that. But she's likely to be indicted for murder. Your wife needs you to stand beside her. And if you turn against the woman you're supposed to love when she needs you most, who do you expect to stand by her? May is in jail. She can't come here to apologize. The little Dory doesn't know how to, although she tried. And by the way, do you know what sending her to Kitty DeCarlo would mean? Kitty DeCarlo's her mother, all right, according to a birth certificate, but she's a drunk and she hates her child. She really hates her. Right now, you're telling yourself that you hate her too, girl, but you don't. You love her, and there's a big difference. Please, before you make a decision, talk to Mary. Let her tell you. Oh, you good people. You good friend. That's what a father learns his child, isn't his child? That isn't your child crying her heart out. <laughs> this isn't your daughter with those dirty, tear stained cheeks. Life has to swing on everybody, Bill, even the kids. They're not big enough or smart enough to fight back. But we're big enough to help them. Or are we just spoiled and have to hurt because we're hurt? Oh, Dory. There. There, Oh, Daddy. I didn't mean to make you mad. No, Dory. You didn't make me mad. Dory. That he just wasn't feeling very well. Are you all right now? Oh, yes, sure. I'm so glad. Hey, how about giving Daddy a kiss? Oh, yes. That, that was fine, baby. That was fine. I'll talk to the other person, too, Mr. Mason. Let me tell you this. She's no child. She doesn't earn automatic comfort from me. Mason? Who are you talking about, Daddy? Uh, well, uh, someone you don't know, sweetheart. Someone you won't know. And what I wouldn't know. Till this morning. And so Bill Grant capitulates before a child's sorrow and his own good heart. But, as he says, his wife is no child. What do you think is going to happen when, after all these months of fear, doubt, and loneliness, Bill and May Grant finally meet again tomorrow? Join us by all means, won't you? Well, the breach has been covered. That awful wound inflicted by Anna B. Hurley when she telephoned Bill Grant to tell him Dory was not his own child. Yes, thanks to Perry Mason, the wound has been covered. Not healed, but covered over. Right now, Perry Mason has some hope of healing the wound, or at least starting the process. As we join Perry, Della, and Bill Grant in the car, they're on their way to visit May Grant in a woman's prison. 145. Dory is all right when you left her down? Yes. Perfectly satisfied? Yes. 
So would you like a man's handkerchief, darling? Oh, that tiny little thing that you're using is ringing. Well, well, if I like it, I'm going to... Well, here, take this. Sorry, Perry, but... No. Sorry, it wasn't all right when I left her. Huh? She was unhappy, worried, insecure. She didn't know what was going to happen to her, and she wasn't ready to believe everything anybody told her. Well, that's sweet, I... No, what? I tried to explain. But... But after you told her she wasn't your daughter, that... That she was? It was? Yes, if it sounds confusing to you, Mr. Grant, well, what kind of sense do you think it makes for a five-year-old child? I'm sorry for what I did to Dory. I'll try to make it up to her. I would have stayed home with her and played with her or held her and taken her out in the park, and I, I'd have made her feel secure again. Oh, I'd have let her know I, I love her. I'd have fixed it so she'd have forgotten all about what happened this morning, but I... But I thought it more important for you to come down to the women's prison to talk to your wife. Is that right, Mr. Mason? You thought. Well, I'm doing what you want me to do. From the street. Yes. Later in the afternoon, after I've seen me, if you'd like to come back home with me, and I, I really would like you to, I, I'd like to show you what I mean. I, I do love Dory. I intend to let you know that I love her. That baby isn't to blame for anything that's happened, and I don't intend to let her put any part of the bill if I can help her. And me? Oh, that's not earlier. May was no five-year-old when I married her. She wasn't any five-year-old when she bought Dory to replace our own baby who died. She wasn't any innocent five-year-old when she started deceiving me. I wouldn't use that word. Oh, wouldn't you, Mr. Mason? Well, you see, I, I'm not very good at words. I, I just use them as they seem fit to me. I would say that May deceived me that day in Miami when she first passed Dory off as my own. I'd say she's been deceiving me ever since. Because she loves you, Bill. I hope you won't mind my saying this, Miss Street, but I think that's a matter to be settled by me and my wife. Well... Bill's right, Bella. I'm glad you agree with me about something, Mr. Mason. Oh, I agree with you about a great deal. And perhaps you'll also agree I should see my wife alone. I'm highly in favor of it. Bella and I have things to do anyway. Isn't that... At the building ahead? Yes, that's the women's prison. You go over to the side. Yes, Mr. Mason. There'll be a pass waiting for you at the desk. Mr. Mason told me, Miss Street. Bill. Yes, Miss Street. Don't close your heart to me. I... I know you're going to listen to her with your head. I know you're going to try and be fair. But listen to her with your heart. As I said before, I think this should be between myself and my wife. May I get out now? About five minutes later, Bill Grant sits on one side of a heavy iron screen. As he looks through the broad mesh, a door on the opposite side of the room opens, and Bill sees his wife, accompanied by a matron, enter. He sees the matron whisper into his wife's ear, then watches as... Bill, 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 it's so good to see you. It's so wonderful. Even with this wild screen between us. Even with the matron watching. But if only Mr. Mason could have had his head in the conference room. Then he could take me in your arms and kiss me. Bill, put your fingers against the wire. Then he could keep the fingers in it. Bill, aren't you glad to see me? Well, I'm glad to see you. Oh, darling, don't you ache to... Yes, May, I... I ache. Of course you do, darling. Oh, my poor darling, guess I'm like a stranger to you. Sort of. Not like your wife at all. Why are you looking like... Are you my... Are you my wife? You tell me. Oh, someone else told you. Before Mr. Mason had a chance. Yes. I wanted Mr. Mason to tell you that. You should have been the one, May. I know that. Five but... years ago, when I first came back from that job. Oh, Bill, but... Instead, I heard this morning over the phone from a report. From a stranger whose face I've never seen. That's how I learned that my daughter isn't my daughter. 
Look, I learned my daughter is no more mine than a stray puppy is mine. Oh, it's all right, right. Hey, you needn't worry. I've reconciled myself to Dory. You must be able to understand a man couldn't love a child as his own for five long years and then suddenly turn on it. Hey! What did this? My line about Dory, me. I always love Dory, even if her real mother hates her. I understand her father was rather a nice sort of person. At least he got very huge sum of money. I mean, that's something, don't you? I think it's something. I need to go strike out at me. Stop hurting yourself. Just stop tearing yourself into little pieces. Oh, yes, but you... should have asked that before some questions about you. I mean, that's... That's what you say. But you could have told me about that, too. Perhaps I should have asked the reporter. <laughs> Maybe the reporter could have told me if our whole life had been alive. You see, May, I don't know. I don't know anything. So I came here to ask you to explain, if you can. That's an awful lot to explain. I don't see how anyone could. <laughs> you see, I don't know what's true anymore, May. I don't know who you are or who I am. I, I don't know if you're really my wife or... Still, I didn't want to hurt you. That's why I didn't tell you about Dolly. That's why I asked if you're my wife. I loved my wife. I, I trusted my wife. I, I trusted the girl I married. I didn't ever doubt her. That girl couldn't live. Not five long years. Still, yes. well, can't you understand? Sometimes we... do things for love. Oh, if you're in trouble, May, I, I know what terrible trouble. I know you're likely to be accused of murder. I, I want to stand by you. I want to show the world I trust you. God help me. How can I believe anything or trust anything when everything's gone? How can I how can I stand by when I when I don't know who you are anymore? Oh. How can I do anything when all I've got in life is a meeting behind this wire, man? <laughs> meeting with a, a woman I don't even know anymore. Nothing's left of my life but an iron screen and a stranger sitting across from me. I know strangers if you love Bill. You don't understand that you love. Really love. I love you. And I understand. And I'm not lost. My life's not gone because you're... You're a little stranger. Even my heart's broken, Bill. You just broke at this moment. But I still have a lot. Because you see, I love you. I love you. No one can say May Grant didn't do her best. You heard her in the visitor's room of the city women's prison. You heard her do her best to explain to her husband, tear her heart out in an effort to dispel his bitterness. In a frantic effort to explain the reason she substituted Dolly for their daughter who died just after birth was not to hurt Bill, but to save him from hurt. But Anna B. Haley had chosen just the right moment to inform Bill Grant the child he thought his daughter was not his daughter. And hurt feelings, hurt pride, confusion, distrust, all reigned so fast through Bill's mind that nothing they said seemed to touch him. Even the fact she was in jail, charged with murder, seemed unimportant. Well, it's about ten minutes after the close of our last episode. As in the streets, outside the city women's prison, we hear... You're all right, Chief. What's that, Donna? You're close enough to the curb. Oh, thank you. You have that photo on the collar? Oh, there. I'm guarding it with my right. Keep guarding it that way. It might help save us a lot of trouble. Well, it could save Mary Grant from being indicted if Prosecutor Apt will take a look at it. We'll look at it if I have to tie him to his chair. Prosecutor Apt wouldn't like that, Mr. Mason. Hey. Hmm? 
Put it on the porch out the evening. What? Isn't that your room? What? Yeah. Yes, it is. I thought he'd still be in talking to me. Look at his face. What? Didn't want us to. I remember it's just between me and himself. Let me talk to him, Bella. Don't get him wilder. If he's in the kind of mood I think he's in, you can't tell what he might do. You know what I'd like you to do? Let me do the talk. Bill! Bill! Oh, Mr. Lyson. You didn't spend very much time with me. Long enough. Oh? Long enough to learn what a woman can do to a man's life. I don't understand. But I wouldn't know where to start to explain. Except... Well gone, Mr. Mason. All the love, all the faith, the trust, all the hope you think it is. Gone, Mr. Mason. I tell you, it's gone. She'd kill it just as you... Just as you'd kill a person. That'd be a punishment for killing a person inside well, now you're one big hurt. Yes. So, of course, you want to run away. I've got nothing to run for. Seems to me that you have. It seems to me that you are. Look, Mr. Oh, yes, I have. You have because of what you just did. Huh? Didn't you know that when you walked out of the visitor's room, as you must have walked out of it, you signed your own wife's death warrant? Ah, oh, that's ridiculous. I don't think you'll find it so. Now, listen, I'm, I'm not talking sentimental guff, romantic nonsense. And if you'll stop and think... You realize Oh, you leave me alone and stop badgering me. Bill, a woman's life is at stake. Well, I don't see it. Because you don't want to see it. Because you deliberately won't see it. I think you know that May loves you. I think you understand the only reason she got into this mess is because she loves you. She loves you and didn't want to see you hurt. Loves you and has tried to protect you. From the time in that nursing home when your baby died and she took Dory instead. To the time she took Dory and ran away. She was trying to protect you. And now what is she going to get for it? She's going to die in the electric chair. Oh. Did you hear what I said? Yes, I heard. Just don't believe it. You'd better start believing it, because it's going to happen. Unless you help prevent it. Well, you said she was innocent. Innocent people don't die in the electric chair. It has happened under there's tremendous circumstantial evidence against your wife. It will take all I can do. More important... All May can do to clear her. From what I know of her, she won't put up much of a fight now. She won't feel she has a reason to fight. Oh, I don't see. That's my fault. Then there's the press. When it comes out that you have turned against your life... I haven't turned against her, man. I... I... Look, I can't help you. You could help it if you were willing to see the truth. You do things your way, Mr. Mason. I'll do them my way. You do what you think is right, and I'll do what I think is right. Oh, and incidentally, speaking of what's right, yes. If it hadn't been for me, you'd never have gone looking for me and Dory. That's correct. You must have incurred a great deal of expense. So oh, I'd... I'd appreciate it if you'd have Miss Street send me a statement. Is that all you have to say? Yes, it's all I'm going to say right now. Without you in May's corner... Without your active help, without your love to give her something to fight for. I don't believe May will even want to put up a fight. You'll please see that I get a statement at once, Miss Street. Yes, I'll see to it. You see, I don't believe it's as serious as you say, Mr. Mason, and even if it is, I... I have to be fair. May lied to me. She cheated me, and I... I... Oh, what's the use? I'm not even... I'm not even going to try to explain my side of it or how I feel or... or... Just send him a statement, please. You'll get it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go inside and see if I can undo some of the harm that you have done. I'll go inside and see what kind of a fight I can plan for your wife. The woman you were sentenced to death because you refused to see the truth. You'd have had a great actor, Mr. Mason. A great tragedian, but you're playing to the wrong audience. You don't bring any tears to my eyes. And that is that. Brad, you told me to keep my mouth shut. Yes. Because I'd have given him an earful. I'm sure. How a man would have you loved a woman who was so blind, so... so Emotions are strange things, Bella. They make people do strange things. Hmm. Want to go in? Yes. Yes, emotions are very strange. 
Well, unless Bill Grant's emotion is the return about. I think he has signed his wife's death warrant. It's ten minutes later now. Perry and Bella and May are in the conference room. And as May Grant boldly tries to fight off her shocked hurt, prepares to give her lawyer the first full story in all its details as she knows them. In Bill Grant's office, we hear... Yes? Uh, Mr. William Grant? Yes? This is Assistant District Attorney Frederick Apt. I, want I don't to... think you and I have anything to discuss, Mr. Apt. Oh, now, that's where you're wrong, Mr. Grant. Look, I'm very busy. I... A man who wants to do the right thing is never too busy to do it. A man who wants to right a wrong is never too busy to right that wrong. I don't understand you. A man who's been buffeted about, lied to, cheated as you've been cheated. Oh. Now, I... Now, I don't know how much you know about the law, Mr. Grant. Nothing. But I assure you, the law offers you redress. Now, how would you like to come over to my office for just a few moments, Mr. Grant? Well, let me explain. I, like you, am a man of goodwill. As the husband of May Grant, you cannot be forced to testify against her. But as an upright citizen, Mr. Grant, as a man who suffered indignities... Just what the... do you want to say, Mr. Hatt? I've said it. I'd like you to come to my office. Sit down and talk this whole thing over with me. You mean... You mean you'd like me to testify for the state? If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. You think my testimony would be important? I don't believe in empty loyalties, Mr. Grant. What does that mean? A woman who pretends to be a wife and then besmirches that sacred office to cheat the man she... On top of which, if you'd like to come to my office, I can show you, I can prove beyond a doubt, Mrs. Grant is a murderess. Mr. Grant, did you hear what I said? Huh? Well, yes. And? What about signing a death warrant? What was that? Wouldn't, wouldn't that amount to signing May's death warrant? It would amount to Spartan justice. It would be a great blow for the right and the truth against sentimentality. If your wife is innocent, she'll go free. And besides, a visit to my office won't commit you. Would like to talk it over, Mr. Grant? How soon? Now. I'll be right over. Good. Good. I'll expect you. I'll be waiting. Goodbye, Mr. Grant. Mason was right. Our emotions do drive us to do strange things. But how far do you think Bill Grant's hurt pride can drive him? Do you think he'll really go to the prosecutor's office? And if he does... But by all means, join us on Monday.